Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare We're reading Krishna book and we're on uh, chapter number 79 and we're hearing the the chapter is entitled The Liberation of Balva and Lord Balaram's touring the sacred places. So we heard how Lord Balaram, after visiting the holy places, he come back to Hastinapur. And it was just at the time, at the end of the battle of Kurukshetra, and there was to be a big fight between Bhima and Duryodhan. Guru Mani Mataji, I will ask you, I, I will uh, make you Chinese translator. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Mm. Yes? Yes. All right. So we're reading chapter 79 and we're hearing how Lord Balaram, uh, he had come, after visiting the holy places, he came to Kurukshetra where Bhima was going to fight with Duryodhan. So Lord Balaram had some affection for both Bhima and for Duryodhan. Bhima was of course one of the, he's the brother of Arjuna, the elder brother of Arjuna. And the Pandavas are all very dear to Lord Krishna and to Lord Balaram. And, and Duryodhan had been the student of Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram had stayed there with him for some time and he'd given him a lot of association and he taught him how to fight with the club. So, uh, Lord Balaram told them both that, that your fighting is stupid, he said, because no one will win fairly, because you're both equal. Lord Balaram said that Bhima is stronger and Duryodhan is more skillful. And so there won't be any result, it will be a draw. But both of them were so determined, they were so angry at each other, and they were determined they had to fight. So Lord Balaram saw it was impossible 
to stop them and to change their minds. So he just decided to leave them and he was went went back to Dwarka. So when Balaram returned to Dwarka, he was given a very nice reception by all his relatives and friends there. The king of Dwarka was Maharaj Ugrasena, Lord Krishna had requested Ugrasena, Krishna's grandfather, to be the king. So Ugrasena Maharaj and all the other elderly persons, they all came to receive Lord Balaram. Um, uh, when Lord Balaram came there, they all came forward to welcome him. So after this, then Lord Balaram again went to the holy place. He went to the holy place of pilgrimage called Naimasharanya. And all the sages and saintly persons and brahmanas all stood up to receive him. They, they all understood that Lord Balaram, although he, he was born in a Kshatriya family, that he was now retired from the fighting business. So the brahmanas and the sages, they like to encourage peace, they don't like war. So when they understood that Lord Balaram had stopped all his fighting and killing, then they were very happy with him. And they all embraced Lord Balaram with great affection. And then they also encouraged Lord Balaram to perform different kinds of sacrifices in the sacred arena at, Kuru, at Naimasharanya. Actually, Lord Balaram had no business performing any of these sacrifices. These sacrifices were only recommended for the ordinary human people. Lord Balaram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's meant to enjoy these sacrifices. 
พระองค์เจ้าบารามเนี่ยทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพทรงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงควรที่จะมีมีความสุขกับตรงนี้ So Lord Balaram wanted to teach everyone by his example. Lord Balaram especially wants to teach the common people to show them how they should follow the teachings of the Vedas. So the Vedas encourage performance of different sacrifices, and the purpose of sacrifice is to satisfy Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram. Instructed the sages and the saintly persons at Naimisharanya, he taught them about the subject matter of. He taught them about the relationship between the living entities and the cosmic manifestation. <laughs> Mm. Mm. And he taught them how they should relate with the material world in order to achieve the highest perfection. So this, this goal, this is, is the understanding that the whole material world rests on the supreme personality of Godhead. And we should also understand that the supreme personality of Godhead is all pervading. And because the personality of Godhead expands himself as the Paramatma, as the Paramatma, he is within the tiniest atom. So we can understand how Lord Krishna is performing so many activities. So Lord Balaram then took a very special bath called the Avabrita bath, which is taken after finishing sacrifices. Yeah. So the Avabritta sacrifice, Lord, is, the bath was given to Lord Balaram. After he took his bath, then he dressed himself in new silken cloth. And he decorated himself with a be with beautiful jewelry. And amidst this, among all his relatives and friends, Lord Balaram appeared to be like a shining full moon, amidst the, all the stars in the sky. Yeah, Lord Balaram is the personality of Godhead. So he is uh, it's stated in the Brahma Samhita that 
uh, Ananta. He is Ananta. He is the, the best, he's beyond the understanding of the mind and the intelligence of the body. The yeah, Lord Balaram is Ananta, therefore he is beyond any understanding of the mind or the intelligence. And Lord Balaram descended just like a human being and behaved in the same way for his own purposes. The only way we can explain the activities of Lord Balaram is to say that these are the special pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We cannot even know the, the, the unlimited uh, demonstrations of Krishna's pastimes because Krishna is so powerful. So Lord Balaram is the original Vishnu. Therefore, anyone remembering these pastimes of Lord Balaram is greatly benefited. If you, if you, you, if you remember him in the morning or in the evening, will certainly it means you will certainly become a great devotee of Krishna. And and this this and this way you make your life successful in every way. Um, okay, so that's the end of chapter 79 about Lord Balaram touring the holy places. All right, so we'll go ahead to chapter number 80, which is entitled Krishna meets Sudama Brahmana. So Sudama Brahman was a very, very dear friend of Lord Krishna. Sudama and Lord Krishna were students together in the Gurukula. Okay, so we'll begin reading. So King Parikshit was hearing the narrations of the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram from Sukadeva Goswami. Krishna 
These pastimes are all transcendentally pleasure to the pleasurable to hear and Maharaj Parikshit addressed Sukadeva Goswami as a, in a special way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Maharaj Pariksit asked Sukadeva Goswami, he said, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the bestower of both liberation and love of God. So these pastimes of Krishna and Balaram are always transcendentally pleasing to people to hear. So Maharaj Parikshit, he said to Sukadev Goswami, he said, My dear Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the bestower of both liberation with love of God simultaneously. ผู้ที่ให้ความหลุดพ้นและก็ความรักต่อองค์พระผู้ว่าพระพร้อมกันใครที่มาเป็นสาวกจะได้รับความหลุดพ้นโดยปริยายโดยไม่ต้องพยาย
จักรวาลนี้เนี่ยก็มันมันมีเยอะแยะมากมายแล้วก็ไม่มีอขอบเขตสุขสุขเดชพระกษัตริย์อัศมหาราชปริกชิตอิสระสัตอิสระ I wish to hear about other pastimes of Krishna you may you may not you may not have described them as yet but they're very important มารับปริชิตเนี่ยก็จะถามต่อสุกเดวะกุสามีว่าถ้าเนี่ยอยากจะได้ยินในส่วนอื่นของเรื่องราวของคริสนาในส่วนอื่นด้วยข้าเชื่อว่ามันยังมีอีก Because Krishna is unlimited, his pastimes and activities for creating and, and destroying the whole world are also unlimited. Because Krishna is a person who has the right to create, so the right to create the right to create the right to create. So Maharaj Pariksit says to Sukadeva Goswami, "said I want to hear about other pastimes of Krishna, which you may not have described as yet." Then Sukadeva Maharaj Pariksha says that the conditioned souls within the material world are frustrated by searching out for happiness in the material world. ผิดหวังแล้วกับการที่จะไปหาความสุขเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัสของตัวเอง Yeah, people are frustrated. They're trying to find happiness from sense gratification. They always get disappointed. ผู้คนเนี่ยได้รับความผิดหวังกับการที่จะพยายามสนองความสุขจากโลกวัตถุนี้ So the desire for material enjoyment pierces the heart of the conditioned souls. ความปรารถนาที่อยากจะสนองความสุขในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันมันเหมือนกับสิ่งที่เสียดแรงหัวใจของพันธวิญญาณตลอดBut Maharaj Pariksit says, "I am actually experiencing how the transcendental topics of Lord Krishna's pastimes can give one relief from being affected by the material energy." So Maharaj Pariksha says, "I, I, I think that no intelligent person would ever give up this method of hearing about the pastimes of Krishna." Now Maharaj Pariksha says, "But if you feel that no one has the ability to hear, then there is no day." Maharaj Pariksha said, "I want to hear these pastimes again and again. Simply by hearing them, one I can remain always absorbed in transcendental pleasure." 
นะบอกว่าแล้วก็ข้าเนี่ยสามารถที่จะฟังเรื่องราวเวลาทิพย์ของพร่องเนี่ยซ้ำแล้วซ้ำอีกเพียงแต่สระฟังจะทําให้เราเนี่ยดำรงอยู่ในความสุขทิพย์อยู่สม่ำเสมอืมมาราชปริกชิตเซอไอโนบบายเฮียริงดิสพาสไทม์สไอวอนต์บีอะทรักติดแอนิมอร์ทูดิมัตเทอริโอเอนเนอร์จีแล้วมาราชปริกชิตก็บอกว่าจากการฟังเรื่องราวลีลานี้เนี่ยจะทำให้ข้าเนี่ยไม่ไม่ยึดติดกับการสลองประสาทสัมผัสทางถูกแล้วสำหรับในคำพูดนี้มาราชปริกษ์ใช้สองคำที่สำคัญที่สุดในคำพูดแล้วก็นาพี่นี้เนี่ยมาพระราชินีใช้สองคำที่สำคัญมาก One word is vishana and the other word is visheshakna สองคำที่ใช้นาที่นี้คือ vishakna แล้วก็ visheshakna Vishana means morose, means miserable, unhappy. We w i s h e s h n a แปลว่าความเศร้าหมองความเสียใบางทีนักธรรมชาติก็เกิดเศร้าหมองเกิดเศร้าหมองเหมือนกันมาราชปริกษ์เคยใช้คำว่าวิเศษะนะดังนั้นมันต่างกันปริกษ์เนี่ยทรงใช้คำว่าวิเศษะนะแต่ซึ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยมีความแตกต่าง So Maharaj Parikshit He had used the word vishesh, visheshakna. So there are two kinds of transcendentalists. Okay, now we use the So the two kinds of transcendentalists was one is the impersonalist and the other is the personalist. One is the person who believes in the life, and the other is the person who does not believe in the life. And this word visheshakna, this is referring to the personalists who are interest. They're always interested in transcendental variegatedness. And then. พวกที่เชื่อในพวกที่ไม่เชื่อในรูปลักษณ์เนี่ยก็จะชื่นชอบลักษณะที่ไร้รูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์ So the devotees become jubilant by hearing this description of the personal activities of Krishna. แต่สาวกเนี่ยจะได้รับความพึงพอใจจากการที่ฟังเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวลีลาของพระองค์ But the impersonalists are more attracted by the impersonal feature of the Lord. The, แล้วก
พวกที่ไม่เชื่อในรูปลักษณ์เนี่ยก็จะไม่ไม่เชื่อกับสิ่งนี้ของพระผู้เป็นเจ้าว่าพระองค์ทรงมีรูปลักษณ์Uh, so the impersonalists, they only they make a show of being attracted by the Lord's personal activities. But devotee will just leave it to the impersonal. The devotees, they just want to enjoy the personal relationship with Krishna. And the devotees become ecstatic when they hear about Krishna's activities. But these Impersonal as the kid, the, the people who are smoking the bidi and like that. Must, they're much elderly people. So these impersonal is they're attracted by the impersonal feature of Krishna. And at the same time, they will do some devotional service. Even though you may come in contact. With the pastimes of Krishna, the impersonalist doesn't fully understand the pastime. So even though they come in contact with Krishna's pastimes, the impersonalists, they don't fully understand how Krishna's pastimes can purify our heart. So they don't take pleasure in hearing about Krishna's pastimes so much. So King Pariksha said the ability to talk can be perfected only by describing the qualities of Krishna. And the ability to speak is only successful when they use the tongue to glorify the activities of Krishna. And the same way with the hands, that our hands are meant to be used in the service of Krishna. And our mind also is meant to be used in the service of Krishna. And the mind can only be peaceful 
when we simply think of Krishna in Krishna consciousness, then we can be peaceful in our mind. So Prabhupada writes, this, this doesn't mean that we have to have a very great thinking power. We don't have to have a very powerful mind, we don't have to have a very strong will. The perfect devotee does not see the material world as it appears to material eyes. The perfect devotee will see everywhere the position of the worshipful Lord Krishna and all his devotees. So Maharaj Pariksit continued by saying that the function of the ear can be under can be perfected. The ears, the perfection of the ears hearing is simply by eagerness to hear topics of Krishna. So Krishna is the Krishna is represented in everyone's heart and that's a fact. Krishna So the highly advanced devotee will offer his respects to every every living entity. And if you have the association of these devotees, then it can give you the greatest benefit. So the advanced devotee, he sees Krishna everywhere in everything. And so his body, for his body, it's not difficult for his body to run the temple, to take care of the temple. Mm -hmm. uh, transcendental activities of Krishna 
and the function of the head. The head can be fully used when the head is engaged and bowing down before Krishna. So Krishna is represented in everyone's heart as a super soul, and that is a fact. Mm. All right, I think we have to stop here. Krishna, uh, the highly advanced devotee will offer his respects to every living entity. He considers the body as the temple of Krishna. But it's not possible for everybody to come to that stage of realization. At least we won't be able to come to that stage immediately because that stage is at the top. So that is the position of the first class devotee. They see Krishna in everyone. Mm. And the second class devotee, they can consider all the Vaishnavas, all the devotees of the Lord, to be representatives of Krishna. But the neophyte devotee or the third class devotee, they will see, because they're just beginning, so they will just bow before the deity and they only see Krishna in the temple. So in the neophyte stage, in the intermediate stage, or in the fully advanced stage, one can make the function of the head perfect by bowing down before the before Krishna or his representative. And the, the function of the eyes is perfected by seeing Krishna or his representatives. So in this way we can use the different functions of our body to the highest level simply by using them in the service of Krishna or his yeah. re representative. So one may, one may not be able to do anything more, but if he simply bows, if he simply bows his head down before Krishna and his devotees, mm. then he will drink, uh, or if, if he, he may drink the charanamrita, the water which offers 
has offered to the deity and which washes the feet of the deity. So by drinking that and by bowing our head before the great devotees, then we can make great, great advancement. All right, so we stop here today. Any questions? No question, Gurmash. Okay. Oh, one, 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 Gurmash. You were the subsequent. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj and dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisance as all Guru Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I cannot really understand why Lord Balaram uh, accepted uh, Duryodhana uh, as his disciple. Because Guru, uh, <coughs> Guru can be uh, a disciple uh, and uh, not, uh, not accept him. Um, but uh, what was the need uh, to take Duryodhana as a disciple for Lord Balaram? For Lord Balaram? Well, Lord Duryodhana came and he was very nice to Lord Balaram and he surrendered to him and he gave personal service to him. He pleased him. So, we cannot understand the mind of the pure devotees. How can we ever understand the mind of Lord Krishna and his expansions like Lord Balaram? Just try to hear. Lord Balaram gave Duryodhana a chance to do some service. He got a lot of benefit by serving Lord Balaram. There's no doubt about it. So, don't try to speculate why did this, why that, just try to hear. Right. Are there any other questions? No more grammar. That's all. All right. So then we'll stop here, Archana. Hare Krishna, there is one question from Vaishnavi Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. My uh, question is, uh, uh, is Omkara, Om Mantra cannot be chanted by everyone? No. Um, like uh, they have to be Brahmana, whether it can be chanted by uh, women? Uh. I think Om, Om can be chanted by anyone, not only Brahmanas. Okay, Guru Maharaj. But Om, you have to understand Om is the impersonal feature. It's a sound representation of Krishna. Okay. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Prana, Pranavam Aham. 
ma pranavam aham vedeshu. Yeah. I am the oh, I'm the syllable O oh, in the Vedic mantras. <coughs> So Om is a sound representation of Krishna, but it's it's impersonal feature. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Um, yeah, so it can be chanted by everyone, right? Yes. Because I see this. Of course, it's a the Sri Vaishnava people. They are, they are, they are not chanting. The, they are, they are, they are following something like the woman cannot chant Om. Yeah. Really? They're saying. Yeah. They're saying yeah. women cannot chant Om. Yes, their uh, spiritual acharya. It's uh, the instruction from them. The woman cannot chant the Vishnu Sahasranam also, and uh, they have to chant. Something like um or something, woman. They have to chant um. Something like that, yes. But they cannot chant om. <laughs> and uh, also chant Vishnu Sarnama. <gasps> it's really hard, uh, Guru Maharaj, for them because in ISKCON we are uh, having the Brahman initiation also for the ladies. You have already explained me once, but I could not really understand, Guru Maharaj. Uh, you told maybe uh, this India, South Indian people are more conservative at that time. That's why women were not uh, given uh, Brahman initiation. But uh, if someone, I don't know how I can explain or how I should understand uh, this difference, Guru Maharaj. Yes, well, of course, the sacred thread, the Brahman thread is not given to women. Yeah. The Brahman thread is only given to men. Yeah. And a woman, generally, her qualification will be understood by the quality of her husband. So the man, um. that if the husband is a Brahman, then the wife is a, the, the the wife of a Brahmana. Mm. So that's in the Vedic system. Vedic systems like that, but nowadays, of course, we're we're not strictly following all the Vedic system. We're more following the the system of the, the, the Vaishnavas. And so, Bhagavad yeah. Bhagavad Gita, you know, Krishna says, uh, uh, even you may be of lower birth, like a woman or a Vaishya, or a Sudra, but still you can attain the supreme destination. Yeah, right, right. Now the, the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra is meant for people who are fixed in the mode of goodness. So in the mode of goodness, it means you strictly follow four regulated principles and you chant 16 rounds every day. Yeah, that's, right. That's the standard for Brahminical behavior. Mm. Okay, Guru Maharaj, yeah. So, so, women, they also, you know, when Prabhupada gave Brahman initiation, he gave it to the men, and there were some women there. So the women said, what about women? When do we get Brahman initiation? So Prabhupada considered the situation and he decided, yeah, he said, yeah, why not? Women can also be initiated as Brahman. But uh, in that case, the husband should have to be a Brahman also, right, Guru Maharaj, or it's not necessary? Well, of course, if the husband is not a Brahman, then it's very difficult for the wife to mm. to follow the Brahminical standards. Yeah, right. Because yes, Guru Maharaj. Women, yeah. Because, you know, the woman, the woman yeah. is obliged to serve her husband in so many ways. Yeah, so, so it makes, right. So it makes it very difficult for a woman. But, mm -hmm. but still, Prabhupada would give the opportunity that 
if a woman is very sincere, very dedicated, that she really wants to follow the Brahminical standards, and then she mm. would be given the chance, you know. What does, yeah, it, what does right. it mean? The Brahmin initiation is an opportunity to do more service. That's oh. why he would give the second initiation. It means you, you, now you're qualified to do more service. Now you're qualified to worship the deities. You're qualified to cook for the deities and to do this kind of thing, to go on the altar and offer arti, these things. You know, some, okay. some, some places they don't, like Malaysia and India, most like in Vrindavan and Mayapur, they don't put women on the altar here. But if you, yeah. if you go to smaller temples, you know, they will have, yeah. women, they will, you will see women doing arti sometimes. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm. So, yeah. the, even though their husband may not be a Brahmin, may not be, but if the woman is very steady in her Krishna consciousness and endeavours to practice, then she can be given the chance. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. I understand, Guru Maharaj, now better for me. Uh, yeah, because um, the Sri Vaishnava people, uh, they uh, they really uh, feel uh, how uh, Gayatri Mantra given to women in ISKCON. But I I can also tell like this, right, Guru Maharaj, the, an Acharya no, can uh, sometimes uh, uh, change few things according to time and circumstances. Right, Guru Maharaj, can I say like that? Yes, you see, actually, Gayatri Mantra is not, see, for, for ISKCON, it, it, our philosophy, the, the, the first initiation is more important oh. than the second. The yeah. first initiation okay. is more important because it's the first initiation, it's the chanting of the holy name which is going to connect you to Krishna, whereas the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra that is just going to take you to the Brahman. Mm. Yeah. But will they be qualified to offer food to Krishna just with the first initiation? Yes. Okay. The qualification is devotion. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Right. Krishna will accept right. whatever is offered with love and devotion. So yeah, one, right. So one who, one who has got real devotion, they'll very they'll be very strict and very pure, and so they're qualified. Yeah. You know. Yeah, right. That's the qualification. The qualification is not I one. I'm I'm initiated. I'm a Brahmin, but the qualification is that I'm very I'm very strict. I'm serious. I'm pure. I follow carefully, so yeah, you're qualified. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand now. It's more clear for me. And Krishna will accept. So, you know, of course, sometimes we may try to put that standard, oh, yeah, you know, first you get second initiation and then you can offer. But. The main thing is that you, you, you're pure. It's mm. not just the ritual of undergoing the second initiation. Some people may be in se second initiated and may not be very pure. Yeah, right, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I understand better, Guru Maharaj, about the uh, Om uh, and uh, everything. Uh, so uh, we were uh, we sometimes we uh, sometimes we we are going to have an open day. So we were thinking like we can also make them chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya because sometimes they think Hare Krishna mantra like a uh, little bit very religious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 So we thought we can also tell like Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya or something like Om. That's okay, right, Guru Maharaj? Everybody can chant a little bit. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes we do that, yeah. I mean, it means the audience is not very, very receptive, you know, if it's like that. Uh, it means they're not a very good audience. If, if, we have uh, to, if we have to do like that, they're not a very... Audi yeah, audience are good, but just to convince the government. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand now. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So, Vishnu Priya has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Danavar Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances of body to Sila Bhagavan. So, um, I have two questions, Guru Maharaj. One, I uh, refer from uh, Vaishnava. Vaishnavi Mataji, uh, about qualification of devotee who is um, ready to um, worship um, installation Patima Guru Maharaj. It should be um, that devotee should be take uh, Brahman Diksha or not Guru Maharaj. He's going to worship what? Um, installation Pratima Guru Maharaj. Deities. Installation. Installation what? Deities. Deities, Guru Maharaj. Deities. Oh yeah, you must be second initiated. You must have a very strict program. Otherwise, if you bring deities without being properly qualified, then the Krishna will not appear in the deity. It will be it will be, be offence if you if you bring Krishna and you don't worship him properly, then it's an offence. You don't make advancement. You bring the deity when you're ready to make advancement when you want to do more service, but before you bring the deity, you must be very sure that you can maintain standards. Stand, strict standards of very, very punctual and very clean. Are you yes, going to translate this, Archana? Yes, yes. yes. ตรงต่อเวลาได้แล้วก็มีความต้องการที่จะทําการรับใช้เพิ่มขึ้นอ่าแล้วก็เพื่อปกท่านเราเนี่ยมีความมั่นใจในตรงนี้เราเนี่
เพราะฉะนั้นในการบูชาสาริกรามเนี่ยจะต้องจะต้องเป็นบรามณะที่มีคุณสมบัติเท่านั้นไม่งั้นเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นอาบัตยิ่งใหญ่ sometimes uh, sometimes people die when they worship s a l i g r a m when they're not qualified they bring disaster on their family or they die การบูชาสาริกรรมจะค่อนข้างจริงจังนิดหนึ่งเพราะถ้าเกิดใครทําพิธีไม่ถูกต้องเนี่ยบางทีอาจจะนําความหายนะมามาสู่ครอบครัวหรือว่ามีบุคคลในครอบครัวต้องเสียชีวิตอย่างนี้ถึงขั้นนี้ก็มีโอเคคุณมาราช thank you for your explanation Hare Krishna Hare Krishna last question from Yogita Madhus Yes, Yogita. h y Krishna g u r d e v please a k s a m a m b l o e s and says, um, g u r d e v want to ask you regarding our uh, own over here. Uh, firstly, v a i s h n a v i Mataji, there are a lot of Matajis chanting over here. Being from a Brahmana caste, it's the first time I've heard a Mataji cannot chant. I guess many m a r a j i s nowadays make their own rules without anything. Uh, g u r d e v also I want to ask you. People who chant Om, thinking of Lord Shiva but not Lord Krishna, what is the result, g u r u d e v of such things? And they're so committed their whole life till the end. They just feel they want to go to Lord uh, Shiva, and their commitment is in serving him by chanting Om. How does this happen? I mean, how do I look at this, g u r u d e v Well, they'll go to Lord Shiva. Oh, okay. But l o k i s h n a said he's all. I mean, it, you know what I mean. It's a bit conflict. I mean, confusing. Huh? It's a bit confusing. I mean. No, Lord Krishna has... says in the Bhagavad Gita, those who worship the demigods will go to the demigods. Uh huh. They'll go to the planet. So they worship Lord Shiva. They'll go to the planet of Lord Shiva. Mm. Good. What I meant is, they after Om, and they think of Lord Shiva. They think Om is Lord Shiva. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's so, also okay if they do that. Well, they're thinking like that. They'll go to Lord Shiva. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. I thought is it offensive or something like that. So, but no, I guess not. Then right. No. Okay. Good. Well, Lord Shiva is also God. Mm. Because I have some relatives, since I'm from a Brahmana background, and they committed to serving Lord uh, Shiva, and they chant Om all the time. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, Gurudev. Thank you. Thank you. Lord Shiva's devotees are more than the devotees of Lord Vishnu. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that's a blessing, Lord Shiva has. So they will go to Lord Shiva. The, they will, or they will, they will go to higher planets in the material world. Uh. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Harini also got one more question. Yes, Harini, n i y o w a n t i Haribo. Haribo. Ting pai kuli de lian hua zhu. Ting pai Harini de lian hua zhu. Kulu, I want to ask you one. 减瘦了，你我没有莲花足。嗯<笑>、呃，那个，我就想问问咕噜，现在是不是在玛雅普？是。我想问一下咕噜，那今年会能来到中国吗？嗯。我们看 Krishna 安排，我们这个时候还不知道。嗯。呃，奎圣纳普瑞亚现在好多了，非常感恩姑姑的仁慈。哦。他现在很好。很、哦、好。嗯。好，我们很高兴听到这样。嗯。OK。嗯。
就负担，放心，好，就负担，寿命难生。OK， 呃呃，好，谢谢咕噜队，顶拜咕的莲花族。好，顶拜哈利，哈利克什纳。OK， 阿吉纳，我们今我们 we finished， no question really。OK。OK。Thank you very much。Thank you。哈利克什纳，咕噜队。Yes。萨提。呃，我们这儿有一个问题。OK。我们有一位奉献者提了一个问题。OK， 嗯，顶拜咕噜的莲花族，顶拜翻译和所有奉献者，追随全。啊，萨提，阿里克什纳，萨提。可以听到我的声音吗？没有，啊，你的声音，你的声音被断了，我没有听到你说什么。Hare Krishna， 现在好一些吗？也好一些，继续。嗯，好的好的，啊，我们这里有一位奉献者提了提了一个问题，就是他问，我们追随的权威是指呃，咕噜萨杜萨什水，还是指十二大权威？还是十二个权威，就是不是有十十二位那个十二位圣人吗？就是我们关爱关、啊、爱的那个十二个，嗯、啊，对。我们都我们都嗯、呃、都，托比他们，因为沙都他们都是沙都，十二个权威他们都是沙都。嗯，而且十二个团委，他们也遵守沙斯拉。我们的 Guru， 我们的 Guru 教导，也是跟十二个团委一样，所以没有分别。So the question, Archana, is. Uh, the, do we have to do we accept the authority of the twelve Mahajans, or do we accept the authority of Sadhu Shastra and Guru? So I said that actually. The, the twelve authorities, the twelve Mahajans, they are all sadhus. So yes, we we follow them because they are sadhus. And and I said also that the guru also follows the twelve Mahajans, and the twelve Mahajans they follow the shastras. So they they all they are all our authority. <laughs> ความจริงเนี่ยสิบสองมหายานเนี่ยก็เป็นสาดูเหมือนกันซึ่งเป็นบุคคลที่ปฏิบัติตามหลักธรรมของศาสตร์เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วเอ่อก็เราก็สามารถที่จะฟังเอ่อคำแนะนําของเอ่อสิบสองมหายานนี้เพราะเอ่อพวกท่านก็เป็นเอ่อสาดูที่ฟังศาสตร์เหมือนกัน There's no difference between the instructions of the twelve Mahajans and s a d u Shastra and Guru เพราะฉะนั้นจึงไม่มีความแตกต่างในคําสอนของ Uh, Sipsong Mahayan, Lago, Guru Sadhu, Lago Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's the last one. Okay. Hare Krishna. Krishna, thank you. So, thank okay. Thank Archana for her translation and thank the China devotees for participating. Jufu Niman, we wish you have a good week. Take care. Stay healthy. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.